Okay, so let's 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 continue. Let's continue. So good evening once again. So welcome to um uh, let's say uh, lesson four. Yeah, I think this is the fourth time we're actually having a class. So we're going to be looking at classes and um inheritance in Kotlin. Okay, so we talked about um you know what uh, classes are the last time. Uh, we said, yeah, classes, the class is a blueprint. And we talked, we made reference to, you know, an architect uh, just drawing up a building plan. And I remember saying that we could have, you know, five people could be given a building, uh, a building plan, and then you get to see five different what, houses, but based on the plan. So that's basically what a class. Okay, so can someone tell me what inheritance is? What do you think inheritance is? Someone should just go ahead. What is inheritance to you? What is inheritance? Hello. Okay, so I have two people, hands raised. Okay, so Judah, go ahead. Okay, I think um, inheritance is when we want a, I, I don't want to say class now, but it's when we want a class to take on the properties or to follow the properties of another class. Like I want that class to use the properties of another class that is inheritance. Okay, so you're using, um, you're, you want to define based on Android. Okay, I need a generic definition of the word inheritance for other people. Generic definition, what is inheritance to you? Okay, Emmanuel. Okay, um, inheritance is um, just taking up uh, the properties of the parent, uh, parent. yeah. Yes, being a, like entitled to the properties of the parent, yeah. Um, Inheritance. Okay, 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 okay. So let's, okay, so ah, that's fine. So when, um, okay, let me know, let me, this is a, this is a live session. So let me try to uh, mind my words. So when some, when a man passes on, okay, he leaves um, something, he leaves his properties to um, his children. So they get to inherit, they get to take over you know the properties of the man so that's basically what inheritance is all about so let's move on okay so what is a class we talked about that that it's a blueprint a template upon which objects are what created okay and then so the next thing we're going to look at is class hierarchy okay class hierarchy so um let's let me let me what do we understand by hierarchy okay basically just uh Kind of like an arrangement based on a particular order okay so the order could be probably based on who has power the most like for example you know you have president and then you have the vice president and then you have you know the whole kind of you know um order so that's basically what hierarchy is about so now um one of the, it's actually natural for human beings to classify things that have similar properties and put them into what groups okay so it's more of just putting, placing what a hierarchy on them. Now, uh, a typical example is this. We're all talking about class hierarchy. Um, we have vegetables, okay? We have vegetables. And in, in, if, in there are different you know, um, types of vegetables. For example, a legume. A legume is actually a vegetable, okay? But it's a type, it's a specific type of what vegetable. Now, does it have some properties of that every vegetable has yes does it have the one that is probably just limited to is of course so um like for example within legumes now you can have more specific type like uh beans you can have soya beans you have um, what we'll call chick uh chickpeas and the likes of them so um you can actually represent this in a hierarchy so uh let's just move and uh, so a class hierarchy is basically what an arrangement where classes are organized in hierarchy of parents and children. So that is a class hierarchy, an arrangement where classes are organized in a hierarchy of what parents and children in an order of parents and children. So let's actually now look at a typical class hierarchy. 
now look at looking at this you have i hope you can see my screen um you have a car okay now a car let's take a car as a class okay now ferrari and bmw are types of cars but they are all under the car class okay and then for under ferrari you have probably the 2021 model you have the 2019 model the bmw also have the 2020 and the 2028 okay so i want you to pay attention to this part now the class the car class here is known as the parent class or the super class because there is no class above it every other class is what below it so it is called the parent or the super class now the ferrari and the bmw they are child or subclass of the car but at the same time they are also parent or super class of these models of these models the 2021 2019 model now what does this all mean now you know that definitely let's look at the properties we know we talked about class having a property okay someone is saying you can't see my screen um so um when you leave it you say you can't see my screen can someone else see my screen let me confirm that you're the only your some if someone is part of you also emmanuel can you see my screen no 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 i can't oh are you kidding me okay sorry about that can you see it now yes yes okay 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 so good Thank you for that, Wenye. So uh, you have the car class, which is the parent or the super class. You have the Ferrari, the BMW, which they are child or subclass of the car. And then you have, uh, and they are also the parents or uh, super class of these models. And then you have for the Ferrari, we could have the 2021 model, the 2019 model and the likes. Okay, so what does this all mean? Now, we talked about a class having what properties being a blueprint for which you build objects, which you build instances. Now, a car, for example, has a generic attribute. For example, every car will have what we call, um, let's say, tires. It's good. Uh, okay, let's, can we say wheel, which would be better? Four wheel, okay? And every car will have an engine. Every car will have a color. I think that's even more relatable. Every car will have what? A color. Now, in creating a Ferrari, okay, a Ferrari can decide what kind of color it wants to be, either a red or a blue. A BMW can say, okay, no, I just want to be a blue. I want to be a sky blue. Okay, so they will inherit the color attribute of a car because every car should have what a color. Now, every car at, uh, also should have, let's say, a, um, a steering, a steering wheel, something like that. So every the class in general has basic properties that it should have no matter what kind of car you want to um build okay there's a basic property and like i said for example is color so the bm the ferrari and the bmw they get to inherit that property and the good thing about inheritance is that you can actually implement that property the way you want now if um a man passes on and leaves his company to the eldest son now the other son can decide, okay, that um, okay, I don't want this secretary. Okay, hey, secretary, thank you very much. You served my dad very well. So for the secretary position, I want to change you. I want someone else. Okay, he inherited everything about the company, but he has to, he can do things based on his own discretion. He can decide that, man, why will I have a um a finance department, have a marketing department, have a um, you know. Uh, you know, the several department. He might say, "Okay, fine. I don't need. I don't have need of finance department. Let me manage my money myself." And he closes down that department. It is up to him. That's inheritance. You can do things. You can. You're free to. You're allowed that instead to modify certain properties that are allowed or have been set to be modifiable. Okay, so that's actually um, class hierarchy. Okay, and then also inheritance. Now, I want to bring class inheritance to Android. Okay, I'll, let's bring it down to Android. We'll be talking about views and view groups and the likes, okay? So inheritance occurs when a child class includes or inherits all the properties and methods of its parent class. So when we talk about methods, we also talk about functions. We can use that interchangeably, methods and functions. Okay, so we have a view. Now, a view is a class, okay? A view is a class and one of the 
parent, one of the child class is the text view. You have used the text view before. So that uh, the text view belongs to the view class. Okay, so it is a child or a subclass of what view. Now, the text view being a class has children also being the edit text. Now, the edit text is called, it's also called editable text. That's where you can, um, in your applications, the, the field that gives you the opportunity to the privilege or, yeah, opportunity privilege to type, okay, probably your username, your uh, password and everything is called an editable text view. You also have the button. These are children of the text view class. And then the text view class is a child of the view class. So the view is the parent or the super class. The text view is the child or subclass of the view, while the edit text and the button text are subclasses of text view. So that means a button can have access to every property and method of the text view, okay, which the text view also have access to the properties of the view, okay? So um, that's just a very brief um, overview. We're going to apply this in code. So before we start the application, does someone have a question before we start applying this? If you have a question, just raise your hand and then we'll move on. Okay, so no question. Okay, so if the, in the absence of no, of no question, let's now actually apply this. So, um, yeah, my favorite, let's code. Okay, so um, let's, let's actually code. So I'm gonna just minimize this and then, okay, so we're back to uh, Kotlin Playground. Now we're going to actually create a class and then create subclasses and then inherit from them okay we're going to create class create a subclass and then inherit now the class we're going to create is a class hierarchy of dwellings a class hierarchy of dwellings now um i'm going to try to i'm going to show you um something and then we get to see what i mean um uh, just Okay, so this and then okay, so let's show you that. Okay, so I have this right here. Okay, so um you can see my screen, right? You can see this. So this is basically what we're going to actually uh, look at. We're going to create a dwelling class, okay? It's going to be the base class now because it's the parents or the base or you know, the super class. There's no class above it, so it's actually the boss right now. So a dwelling, that's where people live, okay? And then we're going to have subclasses, the square cabin and a round hut. And then the round hut is going to have a subclass, a child class, which is called a round tower. So we're going to actually implement this. We'll create the base class and then uh, see how um, the whole hierarchy thing and inheritance world works. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead since no one has a question. So now our class, okay, let's do that. Um, I'm going to do this outside the main function. So let's go to our class and then we'll call it dwelling. Okay, now that is that. Now, Notice that any class can actually be the base class, any class at all. But there's a specific type of class we would want to use when creating um, a class that we want to be inherited from. And that kind of class is what we call an abstract class. Okay. Now, an abstract class is just a class that cannot be instantiated because it is not you know, fully implemented. When I say instantiated, it means you cannot create an object of that class. Okay, because you have not fully implemented it. It's just it's just like a blueprint. Okay, you can't actually um, create an object uh, of a blueprint if it is abstract. Like from the word abstract, you don't really know how it's going to look like. There's nothing that has been implemented. Okay, so we're going to be making use of an abstract class. Okay, so you can just think of an abstract class like just think of it as a sketch, where you just drop your ideas or your plan. 
but you don't have enough information to what build it. Okay. Now, um, this is so. How do we actually create an abstract class? It's just simple. We use the keyword abstract. That is just it. So let's let me show you. So we said we cannot instantiate from an abstract class. So let's try to do like we would actually create an object before. Let me use small letter dwelling. Let's try to see if we can create an instance of this class. I'm going to call dwelling. Okay, and then add my this is, so let's try let's run this and then we'll see. And it says cannot create an instance of an abstract word class. So that that actually validates the definition of an abstract word class. Okay, so um, one of the reasons we like we said it it actually leaves um, a lot of implementation to the uh, to the users okay to the uh, parents or to the children rather who would inherit from that so we'll, we'll actually look more into this as we are moving forward okay so now let's add a property to this abstract class let's add a property now every dwelling will have a what we call a building material Okay, um, for example, you can use mud to build a house, you can use cement to build a house, you can use um, straws, you can use wood, a lot of things. So every dwelling class will have a building material. So that is one property of a dwelling. So I'm going to create it and I'm going to use a val so that it will not be modified. And I'm just gonna say val and I'm gonna say, this building is going to be of type string. That is it. So, uh, okay, sorry, building material. Okay, good. So this is one property of the abstract word class. Now let's let's run this. Let me just um, let's comment this out, and then I want to just run something. And now it's it's actually giving us an error. It says property must be initialized or abstract. Now we looked at declaring a variable and initializing a variable. In declaring, you're actually creating a variable or a container and you're specifying what kind of values should be stored. This is a variable declaration. We have not initialized it. That means we have not given it a value. So on running this, it's telling you, look, if you want to, you can, you should actually initialize or you make it abstract. Now, what does making it um, abstract actually what mean it means that you're leaving the implementation to whoever is going to make use of it okay so the building property it does not have a value we don't want to give it this building material we don't want to give it a value because if we say if we give it a value for example and say um wood so we are basically saying that anybody any child that inherits this dwelling class, you must use wood as your building material because that is the value we gave it. But we don't want that. We don't want that. So we want to allow them to actually just use it the way they want. So in order to do that, we now have to make this um, variable to be an abstract one. Variable. And that's actually what solves that. So I think when we run the wood, there's no issue. Yeah, we are fine. We are fine. So that is actually what uh, that. So I think let me try to create more room here. Take this up. Okay. So uh, what's the next thing? Uh, let's now create. Uh, let's. I think I'll uncomment this now. Okay. So now, like I said, this will actually give us an error because we cannot what create a. Um, um, an instance for some of us who be right with that. Let me show you again. Yes, you can't create an instance of an abstract word class. Okay, so uh, just wanted to reiterate that. Okay, so what what else can we do? Let's add another property. Now, every building, every dwelling will have what we call a capacity. Okay, so I'm just gonna make this as quick as possible capacity and then our capacity is going to be of what type int that means we want only integer values number values for this word variable so what is the capacity okay that is the number that is the number of 
um, people that can actually what be in that building that's capacity the capacity of the building number of people that can actually be there that is that then um, we can actually add one more property and we're going to make this a private property so that it is only assessed okay when we give the allow now uh, i'm going to do this inside here i can actually create it outside but i want to put it here so that on creating um, on making use of this, uh, when we are creating an object of this dwelling class, the first thing you put is the um, number of residents, like how many people are currently, like um, how, um, the number of residents that will reside in that building. And of course, the number of residents can be less than or equal to the capacity. So if you have, if you have a dwelling of uh, that has a capacity of uh, probably eight people, Okay, so the residence should be should be less than or equal to what eight. Uh, so we're not going to build the um, write the code for, uh, you know, for people that are hustling back in the days where in one room you have like six people in one room and they are stuffing themselves up. Okay, so that's not what we're going to do. So um, except that one room was built for six people. Okay, so I'm going to add a private variable here, and now I'm going to make it a bar because it can be modified, and I'm going to say residence. And then residence is going to be of type what in. So this is going to take an integer what value. So that's uh, that. So now someone may ask, why am I using, you know, what is private? Okay, private is actually what we call a visibility modifier. Okay, so it means that the resident property, okay, is only visible and can be used inside this class. Okay, it cannot be as assessed from anywhere else in your program, especially. So you need to note this when we start building applications and writing codes. Okay, when you name a, 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 a variable private, okay, you can only use it within the class, not elsewhere. So that's why. So we have other pop, um, visibility identifiers, we have public, protected, and the like. So we get to talk about them as we move on with the course. So the last thing, uh, let's just add one last. Um, I say last, okay, a function. Now this function, I'm going to create, um, call it has room. Now we want to know if there is room in the dwelling. Probably let's assume that the capacity of this dwelling is um, probably eight people. So, and maybe we want, somebody else wants to join. So we need to know if there's space, if there's room, do we have room in this dwelling? So I'm going to create that function and this function will return, what, return a Boolean. So it's either you have the space or there's no space. Is that there's room or there's no room? So that's a true or false situation. So that is going to give us return a Boolean. So we're gonna have this. And how do we get a Boolean? So we'll just return. So I'm gonna, yeah, return. What are we returning? We'll return the residence, okay? We'll check if the residence is less than the capacity. That's what we're going to, okay, I used greater than, sorry, less than. So it's, this is what it will check for. We want to check, is the residence less than the capacity? So if the residence is less than capacity, it will return what true. That's basically, it will just give us the value of residence with less than capacity. So we'll get to test that when we actually give um, values to this code. So basically this is actually our abstract class. This is our blueprint, okay? The building material, we're leaving it up to whoever is going to inherit it. Everything, we just, we have not really done any implementation here. We're leaving everything up to that. So we have actually just created a, let me use a company. And um, soon now we'll actually, you know, the owner of the company will soon die. So he just, put, he just puts up one or two things and then, allows the children to inherit. So now let's create those children now. And those children are what subclasses. So let's give birth to kids right now. Okay, let's give birth to kids. So the first, um, I want to do that now. So just below the dwelling class, I'm going to create a class. So uh, from, uh, from the picture I showed you, I'm gonna create a square cabin. Okay, now this is we just creating a child class called square cabin, but we need to specify, we want this class to inherit from the dwelling class. We want the square cabin 
to inherit everything in this class. So how do we do that? It's very simple. We make use of our colon. So this colon here now what um, indicates what inheritance relationship. That is what the colon does. It indicates inheritance relationship. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Um, Emmanuel, you have a question. So go ahead. Not really a question, an observation. The class, you, you had a typo there. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very Thank you. Thank you. the abstract above it. Okay. Okay. Any other? Okay. Thank you. So, so yes. So the uh, the colon actually what indicates inheritance, what relationship, and what are we inheriting from? It is the dwelling class. So I'm going to type the dwelling class and then all use my parentheses. Now remember, we actually put a value here. Now let's let's let me show something. Okay. There's a whole lot of issues here but I want to just stick to one of them and then we'll get to look at that. We have expecting member what declaration, property must be initialized or made abstract, we'll look into that. So, okay, so you can see, yeah, we have an error here. So this should be abstract, so I've solved that. And so I'm going to be showing you some errors. So we'll get to now be seeing how to, okay, so this is expecting um, a, uh, an opening brace. Okay, so uh, we'll look into that. And then I'll show you where to put that. And then class square cabin is not abstract and does not implement the abstract based word class. So now the last one is what I want to actually show us. No value passed for parameter what resident. Remember when we were creating our dwelling class, we actually gave it a resident what property. So that on creating a child class, you must tell us the number of residents you want to be in that class. So that means when you create a, a, um, it's an, um, a building from your dwelling, a new dwelling, rather, you need to tell us the number of residents you want to be there. That's basically what I wanted to go for. So um, let's give, let's say three. Okay, so let's say three. So um, a function, I think this is, we have another, so this, yes, because this is a function, it should have that. Um, so I think, so now, Class square cabin is not abstract. This is another thing. It tells us that this is not what abstract. And because it's not abstract, it's saying it cannot what inherit, it cannot implement, does not even implement the abstract based class because the class square cabin is not. And then it's also telling that the building material string defined in you know, well dwelling. So this is how we can actually, that. what is it even saying? It's saying that, look, this square cabin class, okay? does not even, like it's not abstract. And how do we now just, you know, try to inherit this young man? So before we look at that, we want to make, um, let's try to make our code a bit more flexible. Okay, I don't want to have to be, you know, um, how do I put it? Um, putting a number here. So I can actually do something. I can create my square cabin class to take what we call um, a residence of type in. So this is going to be a resident variable. Reason being because since it's my class, I'm going to create, of course, as a class, I have to create, I'll create an object of this class. So on creating an object, I need to create the number of residents. So I can now take this resident and instead of passing three here, I'll pass in residents. And that, so that just makes it a bit more what flexible makes it a bit more flexible then uh so i think let's see let's see so let's run and then let's see the only error we have yes class square cabin is not abstract so now when you declare abstract functions or variables okay it's like you're trying to like it's like you just give it a promise that look you give them values and implement them later so for a variable it actually means that you know any subclass that of that abstract class okay you need to actually give it a value we need to give it a value. So basically, this is what it's saying in a layman term. When you inherit something, when, when a child inherits something from the father, okay? Now, based on what the man said, 
he's expecting that okay fine this child will what start making use of it so if i give if if you inherit probably my company i this is expected that when you fight when as far as you take over that company it's expected that you start doing things okay with those stuff that have dropped for you but now we're not doing anything so what do we mean it now means that this square cabin class that is inherited from the dwelling you need to give these guys a value because that's why we made it abstract. We left the implementation to you. So please give them a value. So now, and to give them a value, we have to use a keyword called override. Okay, we have to use a keyword called what override. Now, basically, like I said, just look at from the generic word meaning of the word override. Okay, like I said, I gave us an instance of inheritance when. I said when it, when the son probably takes over from the father's company, he's free to override certain decisions. That means he's implementing this stuff his own way. I don't want a finance department anywhere. I'll handle that. I don't want to have to pay 10 people in finance. I can handle the money. He overrides certain decisions, regardless of what was what there. So we use the override keyword. And then save our building material okay sorry and then we now give it and let's say wood so if you notice i didn't have to um you know declare and say shrinking you know it was already declared here so all i'm now doing is i'm actually creating a variable i'm overriding this young man I don't want, I now want the building material to be what wood. Now, the second thing is the capacity. So we we'll use the override keyword again. Capacity, and then I'm going to give it a, let's say a, uh, let's say a five. Let's give it a five. So we have over, overreading what that, okay? Now, let's, let's, let's actually test our code. Okay, so for now, I don't think, yeah, we don't have any errors. Good. So let's test this code now to see if it what works. So to test this, we need to now create an instance of our square cabin. Remember, it's a class. We need to create an instance of our square what cabin. So how do we do that? Okay. So basically, we'll just do that in our main function. We'll do that in our main function. So I'm going to just take this out. And then I'm going to save our square cabin. I want to use small letter equals okay we want to now call our square cabin class and remember our square cabin takes number of residents as a parameter so what number of residents do we want to give so let's say a five so we have just created a square cabin object okay and it takes the number of residents to be what five so with this now, we can just play around. We've done this before, so I'm just going to say print line. And then, uh, okay. So let's let's make this a bit, um, let's see, square cabin. And then let's just do, okay. So that is just actually what, and uh, this thing, and the new line. That's the uh, slash n just to create a new line. And uh, so let's kind of just copy this and um, duplicate that. Okay. Okay, good. Now, so the first thing, so now we've gotten this. So let's now do this. So uh, I'm going to say capacity. And then. Um, like we did before, I will just I want to use a square template. I'm now going to call my square cabin object. So with the object, I'm able to assess the properties. Okay, and what are what are the properties? Uh, I can be able to assess capacity. Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm going to copy this. Okay, so the next thing, uh, let's see for the material. And then this will be square cabin. And then I'll call building. Um, sorry. 
building material. Okay, and then the last uh, thing we we'll want to check is if there is room. So I'm going to say has room. It's going to be a question mark, and then okay. So I think I need to. Okay, so does it have room? So square cabin dots has room. So let's see. Yeah. Okay, so we can actually just do this, but it has room. And it's a method. So so this is it actually. So let's let's run this and see the results. So basically what we want to see, we want to see capacity and then we'll see the capacity, material, and then we'll see the material, and then check if it has room. So uh, let's run this and then let's see. Okay, so this is our result. We have square cabin from this and the capacity was what? Five. So it's able to assess this variable. And then we have uh, the material, which is wood. And then the has room value is what? False. Now, why is it false? The function we wrote here. Now, remember, look at in our square cabin, we did not override the function. We did not override the has room function, okay? So, and in creating the object, because the square uh, cabin class is inheriting the dwelling class, it also has access to the has room function, even though we did not override it, even though we did nothing to it. So, of course, the cap and the function we wrote here is that it should return um, the residence less than capacity. What is the value? Our residence of which we introduced here is five, right? Okay, yeah, our residence rather, sorry. Uh, what's our residence? Our residence is, uh, where did we create our object? Okay, five, yes. And then what is the capacity? The capacity also is five. Now is five less than five, that's false. That gives us, uh, that's why we have what um, false. So if I change this capacity to six and then run this, I think our has room changes to what true because five, which is the residence that we actually put here is less than the capacity, which is what six. Okay, so that's basic inheritance actually. That's what basic what inheritance. That's how you actually what inherit what stuff. So we can actually just make this a bit more. Uh, if you notice we have a lot of uh, print line statements. We have a lot of it. So we can actually use, you know, so I want to introduce something. Um, let's see if Kotlin Playground has that here. Um, so where we have a lot of print line statements, we could just use something. So I'll just come down here. So there is a, a keyword with. So this is how it works. Just like it works, just like your you know um, your when statements and that. So what does it? What what are we going to say? With and I'm going to put in our object. So with square cabin, this is just to make our code a bit more um, simplified. So with square cabin, what do you want to do with this object? So I can just copy the whole of um, this so that I won't have to, because in, in this other code, you have, we are calling the object how many times? One, two, three. We are calling the object three times, but here we just want to call it, um, call it just once. And with that, I don't need to actually what use this guy anymore. I can just say capacity. Here I can just say building material, and here I can just say has room. So with the square cabin object, give me access to capacity. With the square cabin object, give me access to the building, value of the building material. And then with the square cabin object, give me the result of this has room function. So I'm going to comment this out. This is running like we have seen. And then let's test if Kotlin Playground has this. Okay, yeah, so that it gives us the same thing. So that's just to make your code a bit more what, um, simple. So um, that's that. Any question? Let's, let me entertain questions. Does anyone have a question before we move forward? Okay.
Okay, so no question. Okay, so with in absence of no question, then let's let's move uh, forward. So I'm going to create uh, one more class. Oh, but it's still yeah. Let me create one more class, and then you can still see that. So I'm going to let's just copy this, and then I hope you guys can hear me. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So let's create another class that is, we're basically creating another dwelling. And I'm gonna just call this, uh, let's call this round hot based on um, what we actually um, looked into. So I'm gonna call this round hot. So a round hot, good. So the round hot, of course, will have the number of residents and then the dwelling, but the difference is the building material is now going to be straws. Sorry. Straws. And then this, let's say the capacity is four. So just like we did here, I'll just copy this. But we need to create an object. So I'm going to do and also copy this. And then I'm going to let's call this, this is round hot. And then it's going to now take from the round hot class. Sorry about that. Yeah, our class is round hot good. And then, um, so let's, uh, we can actually just um, give it a three. As a, as a number of residents. Okay, uh, so with round hot now, with the object round hot, Good. Just give me capacity building and that. So uh, I think I'll change this to round hot. Okay, so we just created another class. So yeah, we have square cabin and then we have round hot. A capacity of four, the material is straws. And does it have room? Yes, because the residence is three and the capacity we gave is four. Okay, so that's actually creating a round hot. This is a subclass. It is also inheriting the dwelling word class, okay? Now, um, let's, I'm going to leave one thing to you for you to try out. So uh, I'm going to just, so let's just move on. I want to try something. Now, um, we can add another class rather. Now, let's do, let's, let's add a round tower, okay? Uh, let's just add a round tower. Now, but our round tower, let's see, just like we did here. You know what? We're gonna have a class on Thursday, so I hope I'm still on time. Okay, so um, let's just do this. So let this be round tower. Okay, and then, so let the round tower be made of, um, Mm, the of stone. Okay, now let it be made of stone. So now, I want this is what I want us to do. I don't want this round tower to inherit dwelling. I've ex I've, I've demonstrated um, uh, base class and then subclass. Now I want us to have. And now I don't want our uh, what we have here. Our square cabin is inheriting from the dwelling, which is the parents class. Our round hot is the, um, inheriting from the dwelling, which is also the parents class. But now I want our round tower to inherit from a child class also. So I want it to inherit from this round hot instead of dwelling. So this is basically like saying a man left, you know, his um, estates to his eldest son. Okay, and then the eldest son now takes over his inheritance stuff, and then the eldest son child is no longer inheriting from his grandfather; he's inheriting from his father. That is just how it is. So, we um, want the round tower to inherit from the residents. That's so. We're actually now going further into um, what do we call? What do I call it? Yeah, further into in her returns, okay? So now um, let's, let's, let's try this. 
I want to just run this and then let's see something. So we have an error. And this is where the error is. It's saying this type is final, so it cannot be inherited from. That is the round hot class. It's saying this round hot class is what? It's final, that you cannot inherit from it. So the error, this means that you cannot actually what? The round hot class cannot be subclassed. It cannot have a subclass. You can also see the type is final, cannot be inherited what? from. So this is also good to note that by default, classes are what? called a final by default. When you just create a class, you just say class and you give it a name. It is a final word class. You cannot create a subclass from it. You are only allowed to inherit from abstract, abstract classes, okay? Or classes that have an open, a keyword called open. So when you use the open keyword on a class, it means you're opening that class up to be what inherited from. So it's either a class is made abstract for you to inherit it, or it has the open keyword for you to be able to what get it for get stuff from it. So I'm just going to make this open. And then that error is out. So when I run this, okay, so we are fine. There's no error. So this is that is that. So you have to make any class that is not abstract. If you want to inherit from it, you have to make it open for the children to what inherit from it. Okay. So that is that. So with that now, we can actually now create um, just like we did before. Um, so let's create a bar, a, an object. So this is going to be round tower. And then it's going to inherit. This is an, it's by creating an instance of the round tower class. Okay, and then, excuse me, let's give it a four. Okay. And then just like we've done here, so I think I can take this off. Okay. Okay, and then just like we did here, so with our objects, so with our round to our objects, what are we doing? We want to get the capacity, building material, and to know if it has room. So I'm gonna make this tower. Okay. So let's run this and see. Okay, so we have our square cabin, we have our round hole, and then we have our round tower. So if you notice, we have the round tower is stone and it has a value of false. Okay, so that's actually, that's actually that. We've actually just shown inheritance. We've actually just shown inheritance. So one thing we can actually just do quickly is to have, let's see if we can add uh, multiple floors, you know, to a round tower. So we want to add more properties. So remember, uh, when you're creating a class, you can actually give it more properties. So in our round tower class, now the round hut, okay, is like a single story building, okay? But towers usually have multiple floors, multiple stories, okay? A round hut is just like a single story, but towers have basically, um, you know, multiple stories. So when you think of the past, uh, capacity, the more floors a tower has, the more capacity it should have, right? So we'll just modify our round tower, okay? We'll modify our round tower to have multiple what floors. So where is our round tower class? So I'll come to my round tower class. Apart from the residents, I'm going to add an extra, um, and I'm going to say val floors, because I don't want it to be changed. Okay, about floors, and then it's going to be of type what int. So to know the number of floors that the round tower what has. Okay, so that's just one basic property. So when I run my code, of course, I should have an error because there's no value passed for the parameter floors when creating the round tower object. So I need to give it the number of floors. Okay, now um, I can, there are several ways I can actually do this. I can actually just always allow somebody to, you know, probably put a two here, okay? But at the same time, I can actually just declare it when I was declaring um, my, uh, what do you call it? My proxy. So I'll just, so here, instead of saying about flaws of type int, I can actually just say about flaws of type int equals what two. So I'm actually saying that, look, this round tower, has only two 
flaws. Okay, we're just giving it a default value. Okay, so if we run this now, it will compile. Okay, it will compile without any what issues. But um, so we now need to update our what capacity because, like we said, this is a tower. There are more, multiple flaws, so we need to update capacity now. Is going to be more because we have if in one story you have maybe just five, four people. So multiple, if you have like three stories, it should be four times three, which is 12. So now that means this round tower has its own way of implementing the capacity. That's basically what it means. It has its own way of implementing what capacity. So I'm going to update this capacity. I'm not going to give it the default value of four. It's now going to be four. Okay, so um, multiply by what? The flaws. So for an initial value, multiplied by the number of floors will give us the capacity of the round tower. So let me, when I run this now, we can see our capacity is now what, eight. So why is it eight? We created, a, uh, this is four times two. Our capacity here, we gave the number of residents to be four, right? But the capacity here, we said four, we gave the default value of four and the number of floors is two. So four times two giving us what? Eight. So that means our round tower has a capacity of what? Eight. So that's actually that, okay? Now, um, there's a lot we can do. I think I'm probably just going to do one more thing. And then, so please, if you have a question, you can just raise your hand if you have a question. Now, um, and I think we can do is to calculate a floor area in the dwelling class, okay? Because every dwelling is going to have what to call an area, you know, if it's a rectangle or triangle, or whatever, but there's going to have what to call an what area. So I'm going to just do that quickly and then we should be able to call it a day, I think, and I'll leave the rest of the implementation to you to play around with before our class on Thursday. So um, this is just to also update you that I'm now going to be giving assignments once a week. Okay, assignments will be given once a week, and that is going to be on Wednesday night or Thursday morning. The task will be dropped. Okay, so that will just kind of reduce a lot, uh, lot a, uh, the load on you guys. Okay, so the assignment is going to cover the class, what was been taught on Tuesday, and what will be taught on Thursday. So um, let's just modify the class hierarchy. So in our abstract class here, we want to uh, add a function okay now but this way look at this now all dwellings have floor area but the thing is this it depends you know area depends on the shape of the dwelling okay how you calculate the area of a rectangle is different from how you calculate the area of you know maybe a trapezium a circle the rest and all the shapes there are different ways to calculate the floor what area so that means we have to leave the implementation of how to calculate area to the subclasses. So the only thing we'll just do here is, since we're going to leave it to them, I'm just going to create an abstract function. So I'll say abstract from, I'm going to call floor area. And my floor area is going to return a double. Now, remember a double data type is basically, you know, your decimal numbers, okay? The only difference is the um, number of uh, bits, okay? <clears throat> So, uh, okay, uh, so double, and um, yes, so that's that. That's basically that. So in our square cabin, we can now override that. So I'm gonna say, so override, so that we implement that function the way we want. So override fun floor area, okay, which returns a double, Okay, so how do we now want to calculate the floor area of a, uh, of a square cabin? Uh, so it's very simple. The only thing we want to do is just return, sorry. So we return now length. Don't worry, I'm gonna play, do something. Length times length. 
that's actually how you could, um, do that. Okay, uh, but um, somebody may ask you now, let me run this. It doesn't, if you can see unresolved reference length, what is length? It there's no way, it doesn't find anything regarding length in this place. So we, this shows that that means length is a property of the, um, the uh, square carbon class that we need to define. It's very important because we need to make use of it to calculate. So since it's a property, we can now create that property in the class where we created our square carbon. So I'll just say um, length. And it's going to be of type double. So this actually, so, and the fact that we have actually created this means we need to, I'm going to be running so you'll be seeing it. It means we need to update our objects. We need to update our objects. In this square carbon class, okay, we actually create an object and the object takes, here, the object takes what? Residence and length. Those are the two things it takes, residence and what? Length. So let's give it a length. Of course, no value passed for parameter length. So we'll give it a length here of let's say 40.0 is double it's a double data type so you have to put this point if you remove this this is integer so let's say point zero okay so um that's actually that and then we would want to let's now add it to the width statement so that we'll get the floor area for the square cabin so uh, i'm going to take this out say floor area and the function I want to call is floor area. Okay, so let's run this and then see. Okay, so uh, the class roundout is not actual, does not implement the base class while having these errors because there's a floor area class uh, property in our dwelling class, but we only implemented it for square cabin. We only implemented it for what square word carbon. So we now need to um, fix that because we have only implemented floor area in one place. So we have to what implement it in the other what place. So let's um, let's implement it for round hot. Let's implement it for round hot. I'm gonna just do so. Okay, let's just copy this and make it. Okay, so for round hot, how are we going to get it? Okay, so um, let's see. I don't know if this guy, if this has a pie, uh, but actually, you know, um, for this, for a round, round, anything that is round, now area is actually pi r squared. So um, I don't know this, I will just use the default value for pi. I'll give say, so I'll say return 3.14 multiplied by radius, multiplied by radius. So this is actually how you calculate area. But of course, if we run this code, there is no way I will actually mentioned radius. So that means this round hot needs a radius. It needs a radius what property before it can actually what work. So we'll add radius again. So bar radius. And radius is going to be of type double because it can be a decimal fraction. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing for the round word tower because we have to implement everything also for the road round tower. So for the round tower, I'm going to take the same thing here. So the only difference between that one and the round tower is that I'm now going to multiply. Um, I'm going to actually what multiply by the number of floors there, floor. Good, and then I have to add. Uh, so just copy this. I have to add the radius also. Remember, it's actually inheriting this. So I'm going to just. Okay, so that that's actually that's actually um, that that's actually that. So let's 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 move on and then let's see. So um, okay okay. So let's see. If we have any okay. So uh, radius. Okay, no parameter. Okay, so it actually wants us to give it a value, but I don't want to give it a value. I don't want to give it a value. So this is this is what I'm going to 
do. Now, I can't actually remember, it's inheriting the round hot class. And the round hot class already has this radius, this val radius, has already created this variable. So I don't need to actually, because when I say val, I'm creating a new variable. So I should just take this out, okay? So uh, that's why you can see, say radius height member of what super type, okay? So uh, let's see if we have any issues. Okay, so no value, no parameter passed. And now these ones is for when we created our object, we need to give it those values. So, um, so the round dots needs a radius. So uh, what do we give it? What do we give it? Uh, let's, let's say 12.0. And then for this guy, let's just say 15.2. Let's just play around with um, some of those numbers. Okay, so let's run this and then see. Um, okay, floating point literal. Okay, so sorry, it is, does not conform. I think that is a bit more. Okay, so we are having, um, so no value passed for. So do we, did we actually specify that it was a double? Yeah, we did. Okay, so floating point does not conform to the expected type A. Okay, 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 okay. So um, the reason is this. Now, the round hot, if you can see, our round hot takes um, residence and then length, okay? But, uh, uh, okay, this, yeah, round hot that. And then the round tower takes three parameters, residence, floors, and radius. So when you actually put this here, what is expecting after this four, is expecting what an integer data type is expecting the next um, um, uh, parameter, which is what flaws. So we should actually give it an in. So let's say it has five flaws, and then we'll now give it for, yeah. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, so we still have a no value parameter for radius. So let's see where that is coming from. Um, I don't think we have any error here. Let me show you. So uh, sometimes next one can actually be. So let's see, no value pass for parameter uh, radius. So where is it expecting that? So let's see, have we made, have we missed something? Have we missed anything here? Let's see. Okay, so um, yes, so we did, we missed one thing. Okay, so now let's look at this round tower class, okay? The round tower class is actually inheriting from the round hot, okay? It's inheriting from the round hot. Now, but look at, in a round hot, it takes two parameters, residence and radius, but here, we're not passing in the radius. So we need to give it, pass in our word radius because it is part of the parameters, okay? So I think that is one of the things we missed. Then another thing is this. Now, we, what we are returning, we are not returning three, um, um, so for the, to calculate this floor area now, this is what we're going to, this is the adjustments we're going to what make. Instead of um, doing this whole calculation again, because if you notice, the floor area does the whole of this. The only difference between the floor area method of this guy and this is these floors, just these two. So we don't need to write all this again. So I can just say return super dot floor area. That means get, get me the super, the method of the, my, of the super class and which the super class of this round tower is the round tower because that's what it's inheriting from. So get me the value of that and multiply by floors. That kind of makes it much easier. So let's see. Good. And then we have um, a square cabin, right? Round hot capacity. So the has room is true. Okay. Um, we have not actually done the print out print for for those guys. So let's actually do the print for them. So okay, floor area. <coughs> excuse me. For round hot. Okay, and then do the same thing here. Okay, so let's run this. 
Okay, so the floor area for spec cavity is 1600. This is 452.15, and then, then you have this. So that's actually that. So this is we just playing around with inheritance, okay? So um, do we have any question before I, before we round up? We have just barely 14 minutes left. Any question? Okay, so I'll do one last thing, okay? I'll do one last thing and then we are done. Okay, so how do we allow a new resident to get a room? How do we do that? So we want to add the ability for a new resident to actually get a room. So our, that means we're going to create a get room function, okay? So that function is basically going to increase the number of residents by one, okay? So it's basically the logic actually, since the logic is, is basically the same for all dwellings. So let's just implement, uh, we can implement that function in the dwelling so that it will be available for every other class. So we're going to, this is how we do the get room function. Okay, so in this our class, I'm going to say this. We'll create a function called get room. Sorry. Okay, so how is this function going to, how can a, um, how can we actually get a new residence? We need to do some checks. We need to actually check if there's even room before you bring somebody in. We need to check if there's room. Okay, so how do I do that? I'll say if the capacity is greater than the residence, sorry, capacity, if it is greater than the residence, so logically speaking, of course, if the capacity, okay, is greater than the residence, what do we do? We'll just increase the residence by one. Okay, so I'm going to introduce us to um, this. Um, yes, so this is actually an increment operator. So this just increases it by one. You can actually do, you can go ahead and say plus one. It's also fine, okay? But uh, I prefer to actually use this. It makes it a bit more cooler. And then, uh, sorry. And then I'm going to now print, um, print line. I'll say, welcome. Welcome to, okay. I don't know why I like this guy. Welcome to Emmanuel Hotels. Woo, glory to God, he has a room. That's more money. Okay, so, but if there is no room, okay, in the, so we'll do an else statement because we need to do, there's also another check to be made. So else, what do we want to do? Well, if there's no room, then of course, sorry. S say sorry. No rooms left. Okay, so that's actually what the function is going to look like. So um, let's see. So how do we actually now, you know, test this out? Um, so we just need to call it in every other uh, method. So we'll just add some pre-statement. So let's see. Um, Okay, just come here and then I'll just on that beneath this, I'll just um, say get room. Okay. I can call this function directly because of I'm saying with round holes with this get the room. Okay, so I'm going to do this to so get room. So the get room function checks get room. Get room. So let's try this out and hope everything is fine. Okay, so square cabin. Okay, we have we have um, room. That's why we can now see welcome to Emmanuel Hotels. Welcome to Emmanuel Hotels. Welcome to Emmanuel Hotels. Ah, why are we having welcome, 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 welcome? Ah, uh, so what's the logic? We need to change. We need, we need, not everybody should have room. You now always make money. Okay, so capacity, if the capacity is greater than the resident so let's look for one and reduce capacity so let's reduce the capacity of square cabin let's make it a four and then 
the objects. Okay, let's make it a five. So let's try this. Okay, yeah. So for the square cabin, sorry, no rooms left. Left, rather, we have a capacity of four. Okay, and then number of residents. So that is actually, um, that's actually what that. Okay, so that is it. Um, I think I'm going to stop here for today. Uh, there's a lot of things you can actually do. It's all about inheritance. There's a lot of things you can do and play around with, and then you get to get the uh, desired results you want. So um, at this point, yes, I guess I'll take questions. We're rounding up, so let me entertain questions. So anybody has a question? Does anybody have a question? I kind of like you guys actually, man. You guys are, you guys are good. So you're not stressing me. So that means everybody is fine. Okay, Judah, Judah, my man. Judah, go ahead. Okay, my question is not exactly related to what we did today, but then it's something I is a problem I find with my I have with my Android Studio. Okay. So I don't know if it's fine if I ask it here or in the in the group like on Slack. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Like whenever I create a new project, it always goes ahead to download Gradle. So is there any way I can make it like download it for once and for all? It no. keeps downloading it every time. No. Gradle. Yes, you it will always, it will always, it will always. You know, the thing is this, um Gradle, uh, okay, we'll, we'll actually get to that point actually where we'll do an in-depth um study of what the whole Gradle thing is. But Gradle is like, um, okay, how many, how many, I don't know how many of us know this, uh, if you check people uh, road construction, where in the road construction, there's this machine that it has this kind of like, um, you know, you know this uh, wine glass, just the shape of the wine glass, the top side, where they used to mix um, your uh, sand, your cement and everything, it just rolls. So Gradle is, works just like that. When you want to build your project, okay, Gradle takes everything, that is required, okay? So when you just start up your project, remember when you want to create a project, you choose a name, there's a package, there's um, the um, targets SDK. So all these things, it has to build them, okay? That's what Gradle is, Gradle builds your project. Any changes you make, it's actually just, oh, bring in your cement, okay, fine. Hey, bring your water, bring your gravel, bring your stone. I'll mix them and then I'll give you a product. Okay, so it will always because, you know, when you're actually creating a project for the first time, it is building an application for you. And that application is Hello World. So it will always build your garden. You can't do it once and for all. Wow. <laughs> because the size of that thing is large. Is... <laughs> My brother, if you want to do Android, you need data. <laughs> the Lord is your muscle. The Lord is your muscle. Okay, uh, but the thing, the good thing about it is, is once you actually once you build it, um, it's one is actually once and for all. Except you make some certain changes, like when you now need data, probably you want to download a library. Uh, you want to you understand? You want to download a library and external libraries and everything that it doesn't come by default with the um, with your project. Okay you actually need that. That's why sometimes you see Gradle sync. Oh, we'll get to talk about Gradle, do an in-depth on Gradle in the coming uh, weeks, okay? So I hope that answers your question. So any other person have a question? It must not be related to a class. It can be about Android Studio. I can be about the training also. We, are, we have just six minutes to round up. Okay, okay, so that means we don't have a... Yeah, hello, good evening. Okay, yeah, Omota, hello. you're quiet. Yes, yes, yes. Concerning the Android Studio, mine oh. has been saying uh, install HAXM. I have installed it over and over. It's still saying the same thing, and I don't know why. Come again. If I'm using the Android Studio, it's been saying uh, install HAXM, Accent. I've installed it over and over. You've it's installed what? Sorry, sorry, I didn't get you. H A X N accent. H A X. Okay, okay. That means you're trying yes. to uh, use. You're trying to use your emulator. Yes. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh. Well, I think I'll just uh, for that one. I, it's something I might have to show you. So, okay, Emmanuel, do you want to answer him? 
Uh, yes, yes. Okay, go ahead. Um, actually, I had that issue the first time I tried running my emulator, so I had to download that uh, HAXM manually because normally the, the Android Studio is meant to do it itself, but sometimes it skips that part, so you have to go and look for the, the stuff itself and then download it yourself into your system. It then keeps okay. giving you the error of um, it has... Uh, what I'll do, what's the name, Omotayo? Emmanuel, we can't hear you actually. I don't know, maybe your network. Let me imagine. It's calling me now. Okay. Um, Ima uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so um, was, um, Omotayo, if you're still having that issue, I guess I'll just, um, we'll just have a session and then we'll fix that up, okay? But you can actually just, you can also use your phone in the meantime to run your applications. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Okay, so let's, I think we were rounding up now so that we can go. So Thursday, we're going to actually be building an application with this, what we have done now. We're going to be building an application. So do not miss Thursday class. And um, apologies for what happened today, but Thursday class will commence 7 p.m. on the dot. To commence 7 p.m. on the dot. So let's try as much as possible to be on time. Emmanuel, you have something to say? No, no, I thought you said 7 a.m. <laughs> okay, no, no, 7 p.m., please. 7 p.m. Okay, so um, thank you guys very much. Um, like I said, we'll be doing an application on Thursday, so um, stay tuned. Um, is actually going to be well let me not let me not actually spoil the surprise but we're actually going to build an application and something very cool we'll do the design so we're going to spend two hours complete maybe two or 30 minutes if we have the data uh maybe i might just want to give away for the number of people on this call to give them extra data safe yeah. uh, emmanuel okay so please let me give you that task eh? the number of the people that are here probably you just uh, help me. I don't know if you can snap it or something so that I'll know the people that I'm giving data, just the people that are here. So can you help me with that? Okay, okay. I'll yeah, do so, that. Okay, so let me just know the people that are here. Um, then you just drop that username or whatever, just, or maybe just snap it and send it as a screenshot to me uh, or my DM. And then right. uh, let me see if I can assist you guys with data so we can really um, go very far on Thursday with the application. Thank you. Okay, so thank you everyone. Okay, thank you for uh, your time and uh, let's have a wonderful day. Okay, so um, if you know you have not submitted your assignment, you have, okay. up to, you have until 11 p.m. 11.59 p.m. to submit if you have not submitted. Okay, um, some of us that have not been moved is because you did not really pass. Okay, look, if anybody in Android, if you have not seen yourself in stage two, it means you did not pass. So I'm going to give you from now till 11.59 to actually maybe go through your code and maybe do one or two things right. Some of you submitted uh, the example back to me. Some people submitted the um, solution of activity three to activity five. So if you have not seen yourself in stage two already, means something is wrong with your submission. You have from now to 11 p.m. to rectify that, else you do a new task. Uh, uh, hello, hello, sir. Yes, I'm not tired. What about, um, I think I joined um, late. I joined, I think, if I'm not mistaken, so that was when I joined this code camp. That was when I was told about it. So what about us? When are we supposed to submit? And said, I'm still having that same issue. And without that issue being fixed, I won't be able to submit the third one. And I've not done the fourth one. What issue is that? As in the um, HXM download. Like I said, you can actually make, you have a smartphone, right? Yes, I have a smartphone. Uh, use your phone and run your applications now. Okay. Eh? In the meantime, don't, don't allow that to hold you back. <laughs> okay, I'll try. All right, thank you. Okay. If you have issues with, if you need help um, connecting your phone, Emmanuel can help you. Judah can help you. Well, they are good okay. guys here that, okay. that tight. But you can still just okay. DM me, Sha. Okay, so thank you very okay. much, guys. Have a wonderful thank night. You. Bye. Thank you.
Good night. Yes.